Any for them, Jack. They'd be of no interest. You'd like more tea, perhaps. I have plenty, thank you. Are you as anxious as that to be off to the meeting in the citizen army, Jack? I promised you I'd have no more to do with it. Then let's forget about it. How quiet the house is tonight. We'll let the dishes go for a while. Oh, ho. so the honeymoon is over and housework is getting dull. Mrs. Clitheroe, that was supposed to set such store by her home. There are things more important than dishes. What, for instance? You. Then what's the matter with me? Nothing. As long as we're together like this. Kiss me, Jack. You haven't grown tired of me, Jack. Tired of you? No, I'm Nora. We're a grand couple. Make no mistake about that. What's the matter? Nothing.
nothing. Why did you do that? Promise me you'll never go away and leave me. What's got into you, Nora? I never saw you like this. And where would I be going anyhow? Pay no heed, they'll go away. I'll just see. You. No, we don't want to see anyone. Figaro! Where's Ned Brennan? Oh, don't mind him. Let's pretend we're not in. Let's forget everything tonight but ourselves. I have some about it. No, Jack, it? please. Please don't open it for my sake. Oh, well, now, darling. Dispatch from uh, General Conley. Come in, Brennan. Why does General Connolly call me Commandant? The staff appointed you, Commandant. And the General agreed with their selection. When did this happen? Two weeks ago. How is it word was never sent to me? But word was sent to you. I myself brought it. Who did you give it to, then? Well, I think I gave it to, uh... Mrs. Clitheroe there? Nora, do you hear what he says? Do you hear him, Nora? Captain Brandon says that he brought me a letter and that he gave it to you. Where is it? It doesn't matter now. You've got your message. But I want to know, Nora. I have a right to know. I burned it. Burned? How could you do such a thing when you know how much it means to me? Means to you? And what does it mean to me? That I'm just sitting here wondering where you are, whether you're alive or dead, trembling in every knock that comes on the door for fear it's news of the rebellion and that you've been called. Do you think your being common dead is worth all the agony we'll both live through? It's no way to talk, Nora. You should be proud your husband was selected. Proud? My mother was proud when she saw my father go marching off to war. But there was a little pride in her weeping when she knew he'd not come back. Don't worry. I'll be back. Now don't wait up for me. There may be maneuvers. You can't go. You can't leave me like this. All the things you said can't be forgotten so easily. All your love for me can't die. Did you marry me with the citizen army? Oh, Nora, you talk like a child. I have a duty. Ireland is my country, and when she calls, I must go. I'm your wife, and you have a duty to me, too. And I'm asking you to stay. I'm ashamed of you, Nora. A man must fight. I. You'll do the fighting. But the weeping will be for the women. Come in, 
mother's gone to the meet. I was feeling terrible lonely. So I come up to see if you'd let me sit with you. I do be terrible afraid I'll die sometime. When I'm by myself. I often envy you, Mrs. Clitheroe. Seeing the health you have, and the lovely place you have here, and wondering if I'll ever be strong enough to be keeping a home together for a man. Comrade soldiers of the Irish Volunteers and of the citizen army in the hearts and minds of those who stand here, Ireland has this night become a nation, taking her rightful place among the other nations of the world. We are a sovereign people, and this night you have told it to the world. You have shouted from the housetops that in the hearts of our young men have flowered the seeds Landed by all those men of other generations who died in the hope that one day Ireland might be free. And Ireland will be free. She will no longer be denied. It is a sacred heritage that has been handed down to you, my comrades. And you must not be found wanting from the graves of our dead. Come forth and cry to you, fight on! We must not have died in vain! Comrades, how will you answer them? We won't allow them to wait now. The time is rotten ripe for action. You have a mother, Langan. Ireland is greater than a mother. You have a wife, Kitharo. Ireland is greater than a wife. I have to hear the speakers tell me. It's that sacred truth they've been saying. Aye, and if I was only a little younger, I'd be plunging mad into the middle of it myself. Get it a point, Sammy. Great meeting outside. Aye. Well, it's up to us all anyway to fight for our freedom. Freedom? What's the use of freedom, the South economic freedom? I use them very words myself just before you come in. A lot of tricksters, says I. They wouldn't know what freedom was if they got it from their mother. Didn't I, Tommy? I just remember. Well, up the red There's a man marching out into the dread dimness of danger, like me own boy. 
while the vermin is crawling about, drinking and feeding on the fatness of the land. Now, now pay, pay no attention to what she has a drop taken. Well, that was a grand meeting, a grand meeting. The memory of all the things that was done and all the things that were suffered by the Irish people was booming in me brain. You know, every nerve in me body was quivering to do something desperate. Listening to the speeches patting on the people's heads like rain falling on the corn, every derogatory thought went out to me mind, and I said to myself, you can die now, Flutha. Yeah. To see them babes, while the blood was boiling it. I can't for the life of me understand how they can call themselves patriotic when they won't lift a finger to help poor little Belgium. What about poor little Ireland? You mind your own business, ma'am, and stupefy your foolishness be getting drunk. Ah. Tell, 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 were up on their way to a shattered and death in a shower of shells. Ah, to look at some of the women that's knocking about now. It's enough to make a body sigh. A woman on her own drinking with a crowd of men is hardly an example to her sex. Ginny Gogan's a woman living for nigh on 25 years in her own room. And beyond bidding the time of day to her neighbours, never yet as much as nodded her head in the direction of other people's business. Bessie Burgess doesn't put up to no much, never having a swagger in mind. But the thumb she knows decorating their finger with a well-polished wedding ring would be hard put to it if they were asked to show their wedding line. Oh, yeah, bless her! I shan't go until Jack comes home. Good night. neighbor who wants to leave a baby with you for a while. Though I, I don't suppose that's quite the same as, as having one of your own. You'll want a man by you, Malta. Will I, Mrs. Clitheroe? But why? If all they do is make you unhappy. Make no mistake, child. 
woman's never happy unless she has a man beside her. It's a woman's nature to love, just as it's a man's nature to fight. And neither one can help it more than the other. It's only wasted time talking to you, comrade. Oh, 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 don't be comrade and me, mate. I'd want to be on me last legs if I wanted you for a comrade. It's highly ridiculous for a red flag socialist to be officially trying with heavy words to down a man like Mr. Fluther here, that's well flavored in the knowledge of the world he's living in. Nobody's asking you to be buttoned in. It'll be a long time before the Colby will take any instructions or reprimand him from a common duty. You! You can wriggle him number of nation! If I was a man, you would have won that place out! No, 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 the news is not going to be sure. Sorry, Tom. Sorry, Tom. I'm not going to let you degrade yourself by talking to a speech-making loafer. No. If you've anything to say, say it to Flutha. And let me tell you that you're not going to be pass remarkable to any lady in my company. Now, easy with them hands, easy with them hands. You're taking a bit of a risk when you start to paw the Colby. Come on, men of the men! Going to the park. Remember? You promised. Well, if Mrs. Clitheroe wants to parade through the park and show off her finery, come on. You're worse than the children. It's Easter Sunday. It is.
Jack, what happened last night? We had a meeting. And what was decided? By unanimous vote, the boys agreed their commandant has the prettiest wife in all of Dublin. Ah, oh, Jack. This is no time for pretty speeches. Nora, did you not learn your lesson last night? I learned what it was like to sit waiting, wondering. You should have learned how silly you are. I came home, didn't I? None the worse for wear. But what's to happen now, Jack? Well, we'll go home and have our dinner. And then I may, mind you now, I only said I may, help you with the dishes. Then we might go and listen to the band concert. Then a bite of supper. Oh, dear. You're such a child. For all you're being commandant. Like a little boy. Playing. A child, is it? I'll show you what a child... Oh, no, no, don't. Someone might see us. Well, let them see, then. Is there any shame in a man kissing his own wife? Hey, Plato! I went to your house. You weren't there. This is urgent. I'm sorry, darling. You'll have to walk home alone. Where are you going? Liberty Hall. Jack! Now, don't worry, darling. I'll be home before long. Comrades, the time has come. Our men are mobilized and ready to strike. You all have your instructions. Headquarters will be established at the post office. Once word of what we are doing spreads, the English troops will be upon us. However, because we are taking our position by surprise, we will have a brief advantage. I do not know whether we will win or lose. But I do know that we are firm in our cause. Commandant Clithro, form your men. We march on the post office in the morning. At your post, men. Double rank. Get out quick. This is no place for you. Rebellion! Post office is taken, sir. Oh, have you got enough ammunition? Yes, sir. I have two in my bag and one in the spout. Excuse me. I thought I heard you moving about. You'd never know with the dimness here that the rising sun will be dazzling the sky. Oh, many's the time I sat up all night waiting for my husband having rest his soul. Coat off, dear. I'll fix you up a nice cup of tea before Mr. Clitheroe comes in. Why doesn't he come home? What's happening? I know. I wouldn't fret my mind, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, I couldn't gather me a wink of sleep last night. Mulls her coffin with a cold on her chest. Self, 
and dread every minute I'd have to run for the doctor. of affairs, having a man risking life and limb for a drop of milk. I'll not be parrying shot and shell in the streets from now on. And how are you feeling now, love? I'm better, Ma, better. If only this horrible sinking feeling would go, I'd be all right. And is the poor breathing any better, do you think? Yes, Ma, a lot better. I thought I heard you coughing in the night now a lot more than usual. Did you see him, Luther? Did you see Jack? Not a sight of him, Mrs. Clitheroe. It's a derogatory thing to be out in it at all. You'll find he'll come home safe enough, Mrs. Clitheroe. After all, there's a power of women has given over sons and husbands to take a run and risk in the fight they're waging. today, Ma's old son. Brand, Lucy. Brand. Well, this turnip has done one good thing anyway. He can't get to drink anywhere for love or money. And if it lasts for a week, I'll be so used to it, I won't think of a drop. What was that? It sounded like the boom of a big gun. Heavens above, they're not going to use artillery on us. Not going. Wouldn't they use anything on us, man? Oh, that's a little bit too derogatory. Oh, that's not cricket. <laughs> Battle soldiers has landed a body in a nice way. Haven't gone fair without a bit of bread, heaven knows where. If you are men, why aren't you in the post office? Paler and paler you are getting. A lot of vipers, that's what you are.
been killed. He's braver than you are, then. No, he's a coward, a coward. Don't be calling them cowards, woman. They're all cowards, all afraid to say they're afraid. That's why they keep on fighting. Fools, do you think they want to die? she got all she could carry before she come and tell anyone else. Hey, Bessie, did you hear any bars getting a shake up? I didn't hear them all. But you're going to hear of one well, now. Hey, hey, if you're not going to leave me Ooh, here alone, didn't you one. hear her say they were fired on them? Hey, Fluter, Kobe, you might have been deep. <laughs> me that the running honey of peninsulas that you're taking in it now is a sudden ambition to use the perambulator for a purpose that a loyal woman of law and order would stagger away from. As for law and order, putting aside the harp on the shamrock, Bessie Burgess will have as much respect as she wants for the lion and the unicorn. Don't you be thinking to pinch it and driven astray in the confusion of the battle that our boys is waging for the freedom of their country. Heaven forbid that anything should happen to you, but it would serve you right if you met with the drop in your mad endeavours to plunder and destroy.
volunteers to try to reach our other positions. I'll well, try it, sir. And I, sir. And I, sir. Grand. Tell the commandants in each position that we'll hold headquarters here. As long as the building lasts. And good luck. Machine guns. Stay down, stay down. where you belong. The streets aren't safe. I belong with you. Come with me, Jack. I can't. You want to desert my comrades? You've got to listen. Come on with me where you'll be safe. There's nothing to stop you. Oh, for heaven's sake, please don't make a scene. Jack, come on. We've got to get help for Jim here. Loosen me, darling. Let me go. No, no, I won't. I should never have let you go. Are you coming, man? Are you going to make arrangements for another honeymoon? If you want actor renegade, say so, and we'll be off. Don't mind them. You've done enough already. Come home with me. Nothing matters but us. There are things more important than us, Nora. I learned that watching my comrades die. Can't you see? It's too late. It's beyond you and me. I've started, and there's no turning back.
sniper get another one? People have no right to be breathing there of Ireland. You, you have no understanding. I understand this. The British is after landing 40,000 troops in Ireland. Christ, do you want to waken her again on me when she's just after going to sleep? Do you know no better than to be shooting? And poor Mrs. Clither was asleep. Flutha, will you spread that out and try to keep us up for tomorrow? Spread it out? Keep us up for tomorrow? And who does a fellow know there'll be any tomorrow? If I'm to be whipped away, let me be whipped away when it's empty and not when it's half full. Please, may I come in? May I come in? Come back to me. <laughs> and I thought I'd lost you forever. We're together again. Your belt. 
It's no use, Nora. They'll make a search. Keep away from that window. The snipers. It's the only place, Mrs. Gorgon. Surely they won't open it. I sure should want to do it for you. Snipers in and be shot for it. Come on, open up, open up. consumption than I killed in the war, and it's all because of the system we're living under. I know, I know. I'm a socialist myself, but I have to do my duty. Duty? She the only duty of a socialist is the emancipation of the working class. A man's a man, and he has to fight for his country, hasn't he? Fight for his country. You're not fighting for your country over here, are you? No, no, who's a none of that? None of that. Ah, cheat it, Perry, cheat it. Will we take a look at that? Now, report of Sergeant Tinley. And tell him I'll stay here till he comes. And he'll open it. Thank you for your comfort. How's things in the town, Tommy? It's only a bit of a dog fight. They'll soon be shoving up the white flag. Only a bit of a dog fight. Come on, come on, the cards, boys. Never mind him. 
Hey, you gee, creeper. Oh, gee, a bit of a dog. Give us a good hand there. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's time. Is it? Lovely, sir. The sun shining. Do you forgive these men, my son? I forgive all brave men who do their duty.
rising is over. And thousands of dead. What was it all for? What they said with their blood won't die, Nora. This is only the beginning. Beginning? Beginning of what? Of more men lying dead. Of more women sorrowing and grieving. Is that all that death means? Must the fighting go on and on and on? Has there no end to it? Yes, Nora. There is an end. We'll live to see Ireland free. We'll go on fighting till we do. I... And we'll go on weeping. <laughs>